Howdy guys, Radio Magic here. I hope you're all having a fantastic morning, afternoon, day or evening, wherever you are and whatever you are up to. Today we'll be running through some historic best of one with Grixis energy. Yeah, you heard it right, Grixis energy. No Sultai energy here, no Aetherworks Marvel here. We're playing some fair old Grixis energy with basically only a few energy payoffs, so we'll see how that gets on. But my main inspiration for this list, some of you might be able to tell from where all of the cards are because they all come from similar sets bar a few is my first tenure in standard i played just after ixalan was released that's when i started playing standard and this was essentially my list once i bought my first tier list and it was really fun to play um obviously some of the cards like fort seas and um shatter, um shatter skull smashing was different but yeah this was essentially the list as it goes and yeah it was really really fun to play so um i thought we'd give it a go in historic i have to say this is going to be quite fair magic you're going to watch today so if we come across any degenerate combos or top tier lists you can bet that we are not going to do very well against them um scarab god is not what he was in standard in historic there's so many more answers to him and a lot of the time you're dead on turn four and if you just tap out for five mana five five on turn five you're dead even if you do get an upkeep sometimes that's just not enough but yeah that's the Scarab God, and this list probably isn't going to be too powerful anyway. If you guys wanted to jump straight into the games and see how the list gets on, remember that they are in the there are timestamps in the description down below. So head down to the description now to skip over this deck tech and explanation and jump straight into the games. Don't worry, there's no spoilers down there, so you can just go straight down and click on one of them timestamps and yeah, go ahead. As always, as well, the deck tech is in the description. So if you want to copy and paste that somehow, then yeah, the deck tech is down there, so feel free to. But we'll jump into the list real quick and go through it as fast as we can because these intros take a while as it is on the one drop slot we have three fatal pushes i was wondering whether to run this at all um as a four of but i decided to run three instead um just because we have to make some other concessions in the list and we have other removal as well so we're not in that much of a heavy creature meta at the moment there's quite a few combos so while fatal push is really good we are just cutting one of them maybe you can go up to four if you're playing this yourself we also have four Fort Caesars. This just goes without saying. We're in a black deck. We're going to run four Fort Caesars. That makes sense. We're also running four Glint Sleeve Siphoners. Probably one of the weaker energy cards out of the energy set because it doesn't really go with what a lot of decks are trying to do with energy. But in this list, we're looking to draw a few cards off of it and pressure our opponent's life total a little bit. And yeah, just sort of outvalue our opponent. It can also chump block, it can trade with a lot of creatures, so that's why we're running the Glint Sleep Siphoner. We were originally running two Gifted Etherborns, but I've decided to knock it up for four because there is so much aggro going around at the moment. Um, the Death Touch and the Life Link is really good at trading upwards and gaining us a little bit of life. And you can bear that with the Scarab God. If the Scarab God can get back Gifted Etherborn as a 4-4 Death Touch lifelink, you're golden. If he can attack back in and gain you 4 life, you're winning from there. So yeah, up to 4 Gifted Etherborns instead of 2, just because of how necessary they feel at the moment. In non-creature matchups, this card feels like you'd rather just have a land a lot of the time. It's so useless, but um, in them creature matchups, you really do want this. Four Harness Lightnings, this is one of our reasons to play energy in the first place. This is going to combo well with Whirler, going to combo well with Glint Sleeve Siphoner. And yeah, just overall pretty good. It can reach higher up the curve or it can hit exactly lower if you want, deal less damage and bank a few energy that you can spend on other things later on, like power um, powering your Aether Hub. So yeah, um, the, also the conversation is, is whether we run Harness Lightning at all. I've run it because it's on theme with the energy list, but you could easily run um, Eliminate in place for this. Though Eliminate sort of does the same thing that Fatal Push does. Um, a Braid is a main one that I think is probably a consideration to run, since a Braid hits on a lot of the artifacts in the set at the moment as well. And free damage is usually enough, but we're staying on theme of Harness Lightning. We've also got four Champion of Wits. Essentially, this is one of the core bits of the deck around the Scarab God. Yes, seven mana is a lot to pay for an Eternalized cost, but I tell you what, four mana is not a lot to pay for an Eternalized cost at instant speed. So bringing this back with a Champion is really, really... Um, bringing this back with a Scarab God, sorry, is really, really good. Um, four mana to get a 4-4 four, four that draws you four and discards two. Um, if we don't want to do that, we can cast it for three mana and discard other Champions, discard other cards, get them back with Scarab God later on. The world's your oyster. We also have free Wallow Virtuoso, which is a pretty okay card. ETB is game free energy, and you can pay free energy to make a, um, a colorless flying artifact fopter. Wow, I read that really awkwardly. So, another way for us to spend our energy that we gain through Aether Hubs, Harness Lightnings, and Glint Sleeve Siphoners. 
Um, we also have a card draw spell that we'll go over in a minute that generates energy. This allows us to add a little bit more pressure to our opponent, can create chump blockers, stall out the board a little bit. Good all-round Whirlai, sort of like a really solid card. Um, probably doesn't hold up that well in a historic meta, but in standard this is really fun, and that's where the inspiration comes from. So we're running Whirlai today. We're also the card draw spell we're running, which you could argue you don't even need to run this card spe draw spell. But I ran it when it was in standard. It gains a bit of energy, and yeah, it's fun all round. So Glimmer of Genius, scry two, draw two, and then you gain two energy. This is the energy choice, and yeah, it's pretty good. It works with Glint Sleeve Siphoner, powers your Ether Hubs, um, Harness Lightnings can go further up the curve with it, and Whirlers also can potentially make you more Fopters. It also can dig four cards deep, which is um, pretty good as well. We were originally running Torrential Gear Hulks in this list as well, so that worked really well with Glimmer, which you could consider putting in. But I found the Scarab God was strong enough at the top of the curve to win it. We're also running three Chandra Torture Defiances. And if I'm being honest, this is the reason we're not running to Mir. We can cut the Whirlers, we can cut the Harness Lightnings and make something else work. Bring away from the energy theme a little bit. But I love Chandra Torture Defiance so much. So we're going to fit her into every list we can play, essentially. If we decide to make a more competitive version of this list, then I guess we'd just play Demir and cut the Chandras. Or we would bring away from energy altogether and play Grixis Control, which is something that's coming up on the channel soon. So make sure you keep an eye out for that. But yeah, Chandra, I'm not going to go over her. If you've watched any of the other deck techs, I go over her quite extensively. Excellent card, all round card advantage, ramp, uh, removal and win the game. And then we have our namesake card. The reason we're playing this in the first place, he was an all powerful bomb in standard and he's quite powerful in historic but not quite as powerful as he used to be. Five mana, five, five legendary god, the Scarab god. At the beginning of your upkeep, each opponent loses X life, and you scry X, where X is the number of zombies you control. And then you can pay Demir and two to exile a creature card from any graveyard and create a token that's a copy of it, except it's a four, four black zombie. And then when the Scarab god dies, you return it to your hand at the beginning of the next end step. So that's only if he dies. If he's exiled or... Um, some enchantment removal or bounced, he does not. But I guess bounce will go back to your hand anyway. But yeah, the Scarab God, pretty good. So while we have no zombies in the list, not a single zombie, the Scarab God's activated ability creates a 4-4 black token zombie. So essentially we're going to play Scarab God, pause in our upkeep with this trigger on the stack, because even if you have zero, the trigger still goes off. And then we shall exile a creature then and get our value. Hopefully a champion of wits. If not, we'll get a gifted Eferborn, a glint sleeve siphoner, whatever we have available to us. But yeah, Scarab Guard, pretty good. Like I said, this is a pretty fair list, so I don't know how well this is going to do. But going on to the mana basis, we have two Shatter Skull Smashings, which is like our value in the mana basis. Because we're in three colours, we can't afford to run too much. But I found this was the best one out of the three that have available to us. The black one, Reanimation, which could be quite good, but we have no one drops to really make it worthwhile, or four drops. And the blue one, we're not going to get to seven mana and want to draw that many cards. We want to be doing proactive stuff, so removal is good. Other notable mention is the Aether Hubs. They're really good. They allow us to turn free draw with a Glint Sleeve Siphoner. We can go Tap Land and Blood Crypt or anything that produces black mana. Aether Hub into Glint Sleeve Siphoner. There's our two energy. Next turn we draw. Pretty good. Also, when we're just creating energy, this is a really good fixer. Obviously, we don't want too many of these. And no sideboard since we are only playing best of one in Historic. So like I said a minute ago, this is really fair magic. So I don't know how well we're going to do. We're hopefully just going to... Play again. We are playing the ladder, but we're hopefully going to play against no Aetherworks uh, combos, no um, anything that's degenerate. I don't even think we've got a good matchup against Goblins. We need we need the sideboard for that. We can sort of stall out and see how we do, but um, this is mainly trying to bring back some memories from the format that these all were in, and we'll see how they get on. But I don't know. I don't have too much of a high hopes, but. Maybe it'll be fun, and if you guys enjoy watching it anyway, then the video is worthwhile. So let me know what you think in the comments down below, and I will catch you again at the wrap-up. Okay, so our opponent gets to go first, and this hand looks okay. We don't have double black for Gifted Eferborn, but we have a bit of interaction, so we'll keep. Very fair magic here with uh, Grixis Energy. Maybe there's a good chance this should just be Demir. Um... Steam vents. I don't know what that means. Like, is it maybe? Let's get down the steam vents. So we get to go to Glint Sleeve Siphoner. Okay, unfortunately, we're not going to get to draw a card here, but oh well. I'm just going to go Glint Sleeve. 
opponent might have like a sensor or something here. Um, growth spiral. Could be looking at a growth spiral. Oh, deliberate. Not something you often see played in standard, uh, in historic or standard. See how opponents utilizing it. Maybe this is arc like Phoenix with green. Or I'm not sure actually why our opponent would be playing deliberate. Let's have a look. So next time we get to Glimmer, we get to draw a card in our upkeep with the Glint Sleeve Siphoner, Glimmer to draw two more, and then Scarab God turn after. So really not sure what our opponent's up to at the moment. I'm sure it'll become apparent this turn or next. They could be on the Neoform combo. In which case, if we thought that was the case, we should have left up a Fatal Push. Actually does look like Neoform combo. With these dig effects. Neoform combo is something we will struggle to beat. So we're probably just going to aim to Glimmer here, and if our opponent tries to combo, I guess we have a Fatal Push. Though the Fatal Push isn't going to do too well, we'd much rather Harness Lightning. I'm going to dig with this Glimmer for a Harness Lightning. Since if we can stop, I don't know what our opponent's on, but if we if they're on Neoform combo and we can stop the think, um, Haste Enabler, then it buys us an extra turn. I don't know what we can do with that extra turn but it's quite possible our opponent can just combo here the fatal push can slow him down though because they don't have any creatures in play if they play the two drop that copies a instant or sorcery of cmc two or less so we can push it in response to the trigger opponent's topped one could see like a Paradise Druid here. No, nope, just gonna Glimmer. Um, don't need any of these. We have two more lands in hand. Okay, so this Fort Seas is gonna help us out. Mm, I think we do want a Fort Seas instead of Scarab Guarding. See what our opponent's up to. I assume it's Neoform combo. It looks like it. Neoform combo. Okay. So they have the Haste Enabler in hand. They have the Storm Caller. And a way to dig. I think we just take the Neoform. Um, so we hope they don't draw Neoform next turn. That's the plan. If we can dodge Neoform for a turn, then we should be okay, since the push can help. Um, don't need to play that. The reason I went elected for Gift um, Gifted Etherborn first is because our opponent has the Abraid, and we need to add some pressure to the board. I'm going to attack first. Just going to play Scarab God here. Opponent's trying to play the fair game and um, 
like answer our threats and dig. It looks like they had a hand that had a load of um, cards that dig them closer, but not many parts of the combo. They could uh, Balakut Awakening to put the Haste Enabler back on the bottom. Which looks like is going to be what they're going to do here. Opponent has no creatures in their graveyard. So we need to push this in response. Opponent has packed. Oh, okay. So yeah, this is probably GG here. Since our opponent probably has the Neo form, they wouldn't have gone for it. Okay, so opponent's going to have to tap down on the next turn. So opponent needs to tap down to pay for Pact. So we probably just get back a Gifted Etherborn here. Put land on the bottom. The Fort C is going to be really good. Or take that Neo form. So, opponent probably has like one draw to draw a Neo form. And they have to pay here, so they couldn't block with a Paradise Druid. And we can answer the Paradise Druid. Put pause in. Or, yeah, put pause in upkeep, but. Managed to get their against Neo form combo. They stumbled a little bit, and uh, the Fatal Push was enough that they had to pact. So they had to pay mana now. So even if they did draw the Neo form, they um, couldn't do it, and then we can answer the Paradise Druid. Okay, our opponent's going first, and we're against an Umri the Collector. So we'll see how we do and what our opponent's creature, what their main type is. I assume it's creatures. They could be playing something wacky though and um, I guess we can actually have a look. Oh, it's just goblins. Okay. So our opponent has three haste enablers here. So probably got to take the conspicuous snoop away. This turn, I guess we can harness lightning. Whatever our opponent plays as a haster. Because we got to worry about Muxus, but this hand is pretty explosive. See so if our opponent has another land. So they don't. So we're just going to harness lightning this. Just save some of our life total. I think we'll just play the Etherborn and aim to Shatter Skull next turn, the the uh, Chieftain. Looks like our opponent's missing lands, though. I guess we'll just attack and then Shatter Skull. So I can sack in response to generate some mana. But even if they have the cycle of goblin that deals damage to us, uh, deals damage to a creature equal to the number of goblins you have, they'll have to sacrifice their goblins first. So like this. So they can only deal one damage. But I guess they get some value and try and hit the land drop. Opponent missing lands is really good though.
discard champion, discard glimmer. I guess we could... Yeah, I think we need the interaction. Let's uh, fort seize first. So conspicuous snoof, chieftain. Probably just take this away. And then we'll aim to push. And then if we draw two lands in a row, then the uh, the champion's going to be quite good. Probably going to go get Muxus here. No, Krenko. That's quite good. So we get to do it for free. And we deal here, here, two and one. And then when the chieftain dies, it'll take the matron with it. And then we have push for this conspicuous snoop or the Krenko. We're basically trying to dodge and haste the enabler with Krenko at the moment and um, Muxus. If our opponent gets a Muxus off the top, it's pretty much game. And like I said, any two lands gives us champion. So we'll attack here. Ooh, opponent. So, just going to push this. And I guess we'll wait a turn. Since we'll just be discarding two extra cards. So, opponent's trying to land next turn. So, gotta hope our opponent doesn't have a Muxus in hand. But Scarab God next turn will be quite good. And then we get back to back Champion of Wits. So, opponent goes to get Muxus, and they do have land on top. Oh, okay, let's, uh, let's go. So, we're essentially just hoping that our opponent doesn't hit something big off the top. And we know one of their hits is a Goblin Instigator. So we really don't want to hit a Haste Enabler here. Okay, that wasn't too bad. We, we can survive that. So we're just going to pass the turn. Um, yeah, we're going to pass the turn. So opponent's just drawing lands for the next few turns. Put Amuri into their hand. Hopefully Scarab God's going to take over. I don't think we want to get, be getting back our opponent's stuff. I mean, they have a Krenko and a Haste Enabler. Is that the plan? No, we'll go to we'll, we'll jump to that later on, play our opponent's Goblins. We'll draw a load of cards first. Um, discard, discard. And do we want to do anything here? We'll just use our mana. And we'll get back this second champion now. And then we get to Scry. And I've bottomed both these lands. So Scarab Guard, quite good at taking over. Probably just a pass. We're pausing our opponent's upkeep. As long as they didn't hit Krenko off the top, we're okay. So we can harness lightning this Muxus. 
which then allows us to start attacking. And we know our opponent's drawing land next turn, so we're okay there. Both of these in the bottom. So now I think we're digging in our opponent's graveyard. Yeah, and we'll just trade off these. Opponent's giving us a good game. I don't think they can survive yet. They could have jump blocked, but yeah, that's uh, that's the game. Taking down goblins. Okay, we are on the draw, and this hand looks a little bit shifty of our mana, but we're going to keep. See what our opponent's got. I think we're going to set up for champion. This way we can fatal push as well. I'll work out our opponent's on. Oh, it's been a while since I've seen a Murfolk branch walker. Maybe they're on like Bolas's Citadel. Be interesting to see that if they are. Mm, just play this tapped. Probably could have just pushed this in our turn in case they had a blossoming defense. They got another one. Oh, fine finality. This deck's probably going to be quite good at grinding. Mm. I guess we'll play one of these out. I'm going to play an Aether Hub now. Try not to take that much damage. So we could be looking at just Chandra tick down next turn. Or we could play Chandra tick up with Harness Lightning. So our opponent could be on Bolas' Citadel, which would be the broken version of this list. Or they could be on just a fair sort of Wild Growth Walker, Murtro, Murfolk Branch Walker. So I've elected to take this route since we have the glimmer for card advantage if Chandra dies. We get punished by this attack if our opponent has a questing beast. No. So it's probably worth getting in the two damage. Yeah, just get some value there. Just gonna glimmer now. If we hit an untapped land, we get a fatal push. Do you want Whirler? Uh, maybe. Whirler's a little bit underwhelming at this position. But we're going to be getting back our champion in a few turns. Whirler will allow us to get in with some Fopters in the meantime. It's not bad. 2 mana, 2, 1, draw a card. So our opponent's on all the Explore. Feels like they've got to be on Bolas's Citadel. We're not going to attack since if we hold the champion back, then our opponent can't attack or we get to eternalize champion. Oh, great henge. It's 
Yeah, opponent doesn't want to give us this champion. I guess we'll attack the champion if they're not going to give it to us. Oh, just that they are. I didn't think they would do that. Since drawing four cards is pretty strong here. Probably just can discard, discard. Um, I guess in this situation we'd rather have blue mana. A little bit more blue. But now we just get to do that again next turn. Our opponent needs to top deck like multiple creatures in a row. Yeah, Wild Growth Walker. Pretty good. If we draw a Scarab God, it's going to be quite good in this matchup. Oh, nice. Like the Veraska. Looks like our opponent might be playing a fair version of this list. Just Golgari explore value I'm just gonna go for this again there would be a scarab god in discard discard both our fort Caesars um, we don't have any one drops that's worth playing so we'll just play tap land just gonna attack for two I guess we'll also attack champion. Opponent's going to take the trade here. But we get to play Scarab God next turn and activate it. We don't have anything to get back in our graveyard, but our opponent has a ton of good creatures with ETBs. They didn't float the mana there, so I guess they don't care too much about it. But another great henge coming up. So we should be in a prime position to take over here. Our opponent's going to explore loads, um, draw a load with the Great Henge, but Scarab God is uh, quite powerful. Our opponent's going to scoop it up there, might not have an answer to the Scarab God. But again, two fair games of magic it looks like. Okay, opponent gets to go first, and this hand looks okay, providing we can draw some more lands. We do get to draw a card with Glint Sleep Siphoner on turn 2. Or turn 3 even, but we'll keep this. This is a very fair hand. Looks like our opponent might be on, like, Gruul. Probably just gonna, like, Fort C, see what there's going on. So they are. Should we just take this Collected Company away from them? I don't think so. Opponent just goes, got a tap land next turn. I guess Harness Lightning can answer this, but they're so far off casting this. And the Shatter Skull is not really going to be relevant. So we get to take one next turn, and then we can, I guess, yeah, we'll just take the Cool Spellbreaker. So I'll play Glint Sleeve. Our opponent can spend their turn Shatter Skull summoning it. No, I think that's fine. Shatter Skull smashing it.
probably just going to Whirler here. And then next turn, double removal spell, because our opponent's probably going to collect it company. And we've got some okay blocks here. So yeah, collect a company inbound. Our opponent wants to do it now in case they hit some hasters. Which I'm sure they, I'm sure they have a few. Nice. So we'll see how our opponent attacks here. So we'll just take three. It's quite a good draw. I think we just like to clean up our opponent's board this turn. I guess we'll just harness lightning the mammoth. And we'll trade with the Zertar Goblin if they want to attack by itself. They want to attack both, so we'll just take three. Could be looking at an Ember Cleave here, which might be quite deadly. And then Chandra will clear up this Zertar Goblin. Um, yeah. Could have played land first, actually, to save the energy. That would have been, uh, that would have been the correct play. So it's now if we top deck Glint Sleeve Siphon, now we won't be able to draw with it. Nice. Gonna be taking two here as well. It's quite a good top deck from our opponent. Answer to the Chandra. I guess they have a few. Yeah, and there's the Glint Sleep Siphon now. So had we not have spent that energy last turn, we'd be able to draw a card in our upkeep. But we might just be trading off our whole board here. Probably just go like this, and then we have like a turn to draw something relevant. Gonna have to play this and just mill two, I think. And then hope to draw. If we draw a creature next turn, we can play it. I guess we're just dead to the Ramanat Ruins now. The opponent has a red source. Nope. Or the Bone Crusher Giant. Oh. Okay, we get to go first. And this hand looks reasonable, providing we can draw a few lands. We've had this problem with lands a few draws, a few games now. But we are 25, I think 25, 26 lands. So we shouldn't be having this many problems. Zero against, oh, mono red. So, interesting what we take here. The Hazarat is something we won't be able to answer for a while. Well, we won't be able to answer full stop. We don't have an answer to the list. So, probably just taking that. Wizard's Lightning can kill our Gifted Aetherborn, which is a hassle. But we have creatures that can block the rest of our opponent's creatures. So, we're just going to take the Hazarat and hope to outgrind our opponent, I guess. So, if our opponent wants to play Robber next turn, then we're okay with that. And our opponent can't play Wizard's Lightning, I guess. So we'll just play the Gifted Aetherborn now. As a just better blocker. They top deck to Lightning Strike. You know it. Okay, Scarab Guard up. Probably just going to be mana efficient here and try and draw some lands for the Scarab God. 
just gonna discard I guess the fort sees I guess yeah I guess we'll have to play more to the board hopefully our opponent didn't top deck another answer I'm just gonna spend the whole turn wizards lightning Yep. Opponent's now got four cards under here, I think. Three cards. So, just Glint Sleep Siphon, I think. Lay Tap Land. And then, if we draw a Untap Land, we can play Scarab God and go from there. Which Scarab God should be enough. And if we don't, we can Glimmer. Opponent's done an okay job of top decking. So opponent got a harness lightning. So we probably just have to trade with this Bowmat Carrier. Since they're likely to just sack it here. And then we get to keep our Glint Sleep Siphon up. Also answer one of our opponent's threats. Uh, we can't draw. So unfortunately no land. So we're just going to dig here. Just exclusively for lands. Very close to not drawing a land there. And I think we're going to take the do damage to have a look at what opponent's got. Oof. So we're going to 8, 6 with this, 5, 4, 3, 2. And then we're just dead next turn. The opponent have a wizard in play. They don't have a wizard, so they can't go Chandra. They can go Chandra tick down on this. Attack us to 5. And then we get to go Scarab God. And then we're still dead to the next turn. Wizard's Lightning. I think our best chance is taking the Pyromancer. Yeah, okay. I'm surprised our opponent didn't... Um... Oh, they can harness Lightning here, can't they? Yep. This feels tough. I think we needed to hit land. If we had a Scarab God down now, this might be a little bit different. It probably would be a bit different, actually. Since we'd then be eternalizing a Gifted Aetherborn. So we have one now, but unfortunately it's just too late since our opponent can Lightning Strike. Yeah, good game, opponent. Mono Red feels tough. We are running four Gifted Aetherborns to help tackle it, but feels like it's not enough sometimes. Okay, we get to go first, and thank God for this swamp, so all these lands enter untapped. I'm going to keep. And turn one Fort Seas on the play is good. Oh, So, we can take this Lovestruck Beast for maximum value. This Scavenging Ooze is going to shut down our Scarab God, I guess. I guess we'll find an answer to the Ooze eventually. We'll just prioritise taking the Love Struck Beast. So we're quite a while off uh, Scarab God. I guess we could just Chandra minus on the use next turn if we want to. Which if our opponent doesn't play a creature here, it might be quite good. But they do. Hmm. We're just going to kill this ooze. Opponent can eat one creature. Hey, over here. Pelt Galactic gets to finish Chandra. And then hopefully Scarab God can take over next time. First of all, we can eternalize a Scavenging Ooze and play a Gifted Aetherborn. We're looking at a Nissa next turn, but thankfully Scarab God can block. I say Scarab God can block, now the Vivian's out. How you've grown. 
it's over when I say it's over. Okay, so I think this has to be a take that Nissa. This is fight? No, this is not fight. Primal Might is fight. Yeah, fights. Okay. So they probably want to use the Vivian down tick instead. And then they could get in for what? Eight if they wanted to with the Primal Might. Watch out. They bite. Equally, I guess they could do that next turn. Yeah, I think we're a little bit a little bit screwed here. Since it's very likely our opponent can just um uptick put two counters on it, primal might for four. Yeah, and then kill the scarab god. Yep. Good game, opponent. Okay, this hand looks a little bit dodgy, this mana. I think we're going to mulligan this. This hand, again, has issues of its mana, but I don't think we can afford to mulligan again. Really would have rather kept the Fort Seas hand now. Problem is, we really need a shock land in the last hand. Grazer, so we could be against Ramp, which is going to make me... Yeah, let's have against Ramp, which makes me regret not holding on to the Fort Seas. Because this hand is essentially the same without Fort Seas. We had Chandra instead. Yeah, definitely Ramp. And I'd imagine Ugin is at the top of our opponent's curve. So we get to go Gifted Aetherborn into Chandra. But if our opponent has an Ugin, it's not going to matter too much. Yeah, we'll draw. Champion's okay here, but... I think we're just going to play the Gifted Aetherborn. I think we'll trade this Glint Sleeve Siphoner if our opponent wants to. Since we'd rather just keep our opponent off mana. Maybe we actually want a champion just to get through some, um, uh, try and draw like a Fort Seas or some interaction. Fatal Push is okay. Probably land Aetherborn, since I don't think we want to be casting a normal two, uh, two mana, two three in this matchup. Probably going to prioritize getting it back with the Scarab God. Apparently a six mana. Getting close to Ugin. Okay, they're going to have an Ugin next turn. No doubt. They got Khan now. So Torment Script, so opponent can exile our graveyard. I'd imagine they're just getting something for the champion. So do we Fatal Push here or do we Chandra? And I think the answer is we Chandra. Since it's just more mana efficient. Chandra down tick on the forest. And then at least in the next turn we can Scarab God, and then the turn after we could animate something can Fatal Push. 
if we make it that far. We could down tick on the Aboral Grazer to kill Khan, but I don't know how good Khan's going to be. So probably just Chandra here. Chandra's going to die either way. It's very going to be very difficult to save Chandra. And we'll knock Khan down to one. Time to die. Please stop. Maybe just killing our opponent's lands will be good. So his opponent has six, probably seven mana max. I mean, this Fatal Push on this forest might just put us far enough ahead if our opponent doesn't have any further green mana. Oh, Golos might change that. So our opponent will need to trade their Lanor Visionary if they would like to kill Chandra. And we're definitely going to take this trade. Uh, the Lanor Visionary, yeah, they're both going. This puts our opponent even further behind on lands. Guess you don't need me anymore. So we either fort seize and look at our opponent's hand and fate will push the land, and then we're taking three six damage off of attackers well, i guess not actually yeah we're taking three six with the golos we could trade one and then next turn scarab god or we could scarab god and set up for next turn but if our opponent has an ugin then we're in trouble they forgot to tick up khan as well i think we're going to go with the look at what our opponent's got take that khan and then we'll fatal push this land so our opponent doesn't have the mana now And we can't attack. Our opponent's going to get to ultimate this Nissa. But I guess we're kind of just hoping that this Scarab God can sort of outgrind them. Opponent's almost run out of forests as well. And the 4-4 tokens of the Scarab World can block the forests quite well. So opponent top decked another Khan. We'll, um, we'll see what they go get. I will not stop. The Tormont's Crypt, it exiles all cards from target players' graveyard. So we can at least get their Lanor Visionary. Okay, so that's not going to stop Scarab God. Opponent attacks for six here. Yeah. No blocks. So opponent might just ultimate Nissa next turn. But I think that's going to be something we have to play through. And we got to really hope that our opponent doesn't top deck something this turn and can't get something great with Khan. So they have seven mana available. So there is some stuff they could go get. They could go and get the Meteor Golem with Khan. And then... Meteor Golem with Khan to blow up Scarab God. And then Torment's Crypt. The Scarab God away with our Champion of Wits. I guess that would be a, a really logical play to do. No, this is going to be, yeah, this is going to be difficult to beat. Yeah, this is, well, I mean, this is just game, isn't it? Three, six, we're taking six. And our opponent has the first activation of our Scarab God covered.
and they have protection from black and red, so like essentially all of our interaction. We don't have a braids to answer this. Yeah, I think that's game. There's not much we can do here. We'll activate and target Scarab God, um, Champion. But even if our opponent doesn't activate the Torment's Crypt here, there's nothing we can really do. All of our interaction is black and red. Yeah, good game. Howdy guys, cheers for sticking around till the end of the video. I hope you guys enjoyed watching the gameplay as much as I enjoyed playing it. So what do we think? The Scarab God, is he any good? Is he not? Yeah, the Scarab God's still powerful. He overall is still really strong. In the games where he comes down and your opponent hasn't killed you before he comes down and doesn't have an immediate answer to the Scarab God, I think we won every game. Like, he's, he's so insanely powerful. It is important that when playing the Scarab God, though, that you do have creatures that you can reanimate yourself because your opponent's not always going to have creatures. And a 5-mana five 5-5 five five with no creatures to reanimate is a pretty poor um, converted mana cost or mana rate. So, uh, yeah, definitely have some creatures of your own. The rest of the list, it's sort of moping around, isn't it? We're not going to lie. Like I said, it's not particularly powerful. It's more reminiscent of what standard used to be and what i enjoy playing this was one of my favorite standard lists and one of my first standard lists playing so uh them two probably go hand in hand but that's what i thought of the list uh, let me know what you guys thought though let me know in the comments down below did you guys enjoy it do you think the scarab god is playable do you think chandra should even be in the list and we should just be playing demir energy some form like that and cut the whirlers cut the harness lightnings and um just playing like maybe um, Torrential Gear Hulks and Veraska's Contempts as well. Since I think we had a few problems with Hazarat the Furban, which seems to be running around quite a bit um, recently. That's why the Gifted Aetherborns are in there to tackle Mono Red. But it feels like we need some form of XR removal. So maybe Eat to Extinction or Veraska's Contempt. I'm thinking Veraska's Contempt for the Passive Life game, but you never know. When I ran this list in Standard, we ran Veraska's Contempts. But now we have Fort Seizes. And we want to run more lands for the Shatter Skull, um, Shatter Skull Smashing. So that's where we're at. Like I said though guys, if you guys enjoyed the video, please consider dropping it a like and subscribe. Because I'm such a new YouTube channel, it really does help a lot when you guys just drop it a single like or subscribe to the channel or drop a nice comment down below. Or something with constructive feedback, always good as well. But if you guys can't be asked, don't worry about it. It's um, I'm really happy you guys just made it to the end of the video. And you must have found some form of enjoyment, otherwise you wouldn't be listening to my voice right now now so i guess that takes as evidence as itself but yeah guys until next time stay safe